Our next presentation is from David Stevenson. David works for X1, um, another 3D printing company, which just shows, you know, there's quite a lot of um, this technology coming out. And David's going to share with us some of the uh, 3D sample printed cores and the evaluation of casting steel impellers for pump applications and potential cost savings. I was asked at the last minute to do this presentation, so I'm basing the presentation on some customer applications. I'm not talking about the technology, I'm talking about the potential savings that uh, 3D sand printing can give you. Okay, so that's the basis of my presentation. And I've, uh, I've got about 15 slides, so it shouldn't take that long. So I should have enough time for some questions at the end. Okay, so uh, we're basing it on an impeller core pro uh, 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 pro impeller here. And uh, Chris will recognize this. Uh, um, uh, as I said, this was uh, a case study to justify uh, the purchase of a system. Okay, and uh, there were some issues. Okay, we selected a, a small steel uh, uh, impeller core. It's around about uh, 20 centimeters in diameter. It's about nine centimeters high, and uh, uh, the the part was to be cast in uh, stainless steel. Uh, the pouring temperature, I think, was about 1600 uh, degrees, and uh, we're using uh, an S Max 3D printer system. Uh, to print these on, okay? So it's a, a Furan-based printer system, but we also used a phenolic binder system as well because we wanted a comparison. There was an issue with veining when uh, casting these impellers, okay? And there was, oops, it keeps jumping. Jumped again, right. Uh, where a tolerance specification of plus and minus about 0 0.4 uh, of a millimeter. Uh, we also printed solid and hollow cores just for a comparison, although really in this case the hollow core, because it wasn't such a large core, wasn't really necessary, but we did it anyway. Okay, and I'll show you some information on printing hollow cores because it can bring advantages when you have a large, large cores. Okay. And I said we printed both uh, Ferran and uh, Phenolic. Uh, the cores were dipped in a, a silicon base coating and they were electric, uh, dry, uh, they were dried in an electric oven. Okay, and I said we were using silica sand and a ceramic sand again as a trial, uh, the two binder systems, and we used uh, iron oxide to reduce the veining. Okay, and you'll see a comparison of our tests and trials. Okay, so for those people that are not quite sure what 3D sand printing is about, I'll show you a video here, okay? So this is an SMAC system. You take uh, the CAD data file and you slice it and you load it onto the system. Okay, so we take away the cladding for the machine so you can see inside it. Uh, over on the right hand side here, we have recycled sand and fresh sand. These are weighing cells. You weigh a certain amount of uh, fresh sand and up to 30% recycled sand. Both sands drop into a mixing chamber and we add uh, an activator here. There's an activator being added, so the sand is now activated. It drops into the recoater and we have a snail drive that spreads it across the two meter length of the recoater. The build platform, this is this part here, comes up to what we call the zero position and the job box moves into the printer system. The recoder, which is now filled with sand, comes across to the start position and puts down like a sheet of paper of sand, approximately a quarter of a millimetre thick. The print head takes the first CAD data slice and jets the binder onto the surface of the sand so anything that's green here is binder impregnated and will solidify, okay? And the print head then moves into the part position and the recoater comes across. And if you look down here, we drop the bill box quarter of a millimeter and put down the second layer. We take the second data slice and jet the binder as per the second data slice and we repeat this process up to 2,500 layers using a fine grade sand. 
and the total time of printing that complete bill box is about uh, 21 hours. If we're using a medium grain sand, it would take 17 hours. The sand inside the box can completely recycled, and here we're just showing one mould package with a core. Okay, and this is a Ferran binder system, so it's ready for casting. So for those people that don't quite understand it, uh, that was the quick video. Okay. So I hope that was a, a good enough explanation. So I'll carry on now with this application. This is, we did a complete bill box of these uh, impeller cores, okay? And that's what it looks like. There's 440 cores in there, okay? We just pack them in there. You need a, uh, approximately two millimeter spacing between the cores so you can separate everything. So we fill that bill box up. It keeps jumping. Okay, uh, after we've printed uh, uh, the cores, we don't scan all the 440 cores. We took a sample uh, and we scanned the GOM scanned the cores and they were within the uh, tolerance limits here of, I think we got to about plus or minus 0 0.3 millimetres. Okay, and you can see that the green here. Okay, that's the top surface and the bottom surface of these cores. And uh, this is just showing you the hollow uh, cores. So we printed uh, a solid test bar. This is a standard test bar that you use for checking the quality of the print job. But we printed a solid test bar. Then we printed two hollow test bars, a uh, 5.2 millimeter shell and a seven millimeter shell. And down here, we printed a, a hollow uh, shell with a, a support structure inside and there were three different support structures. You can select them on, a, on the program. Uh, and as I said, there was a seven millimeter shell and these two were 5.2 using different types of support structures. And on this slide, you see uh, the comparison. So the, the solid test bar, we're saying 100%. It has approximately 280 newtons per square centimeter on strength. So that would be classed as 100%, okay? The seven millimeter shell with a support structure was approximately 3% less, okay? Uh, the seven millimeter shell with no support structure was 13% less than the solid bar. The 5.2 millimeter shell with support structure, this support structure was 20% less. Uh, with the other support structure, it was also around about 20% less and the 5.2 millimeter shell with no support structure was uh, about 26% uh, less than the solid test bar. So it, it really depends on the thickness of your shell uh, and obviously the size of your component. If you can do a 16 millimeter shell, depending on what you're casting, it might be ideal. You don't need any support structure. Okay, and I can tell you that some of the advantages of printing hollow cores as well comes in a, a, a later slide. So this was the coating process. Uh, they coated them uh, and then dried them in an oven. And this was uh, getting ready for the pouring trials here at the, uh, the facility of the company. Okay, so this is the, the hollow core. We, we, I said we printed it hollow. And this is uh, the phenolic based binder here. And this was a Ferran based uh, binder here. And the issue was veining in these areas here. There was a veining issue because of the temperature and the uh, expansion of the sand. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's very clear on these images. Uh, we're using a fine grain sand here, uh, and this was a, 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 a phenolic binder. This was a fine grain fat, uh, sand with Ferran binder. This was a ceramic sand using Ferran binder. And these three are medium grain sand with Ferran with a 2% iron oxide and with a 4% iron oxide. And with the phenolic binder, there was no veining. Okay, with the Ferran binder, we classified that as 100% veining in this area here. And then with the uh, uh, fine ceramic, uh, ceramic uh, the ceramic, there was no veining, but the ceramic sand, of course, is expensive. Uh, and then the medium grain sand, 
uh, it reduced the veining with no additive by approximately 50% compared to this. And when we added 2% iron oxide, uh, we reduced it uh, to 90%. And then we put 4% iron oxide and there was no veining at all. Okay, so that was actually the, uh, the final conclusion uh, on this test for the veining. Uh, and this is showing you the advantages. This is another customer application uh, on hollow cores. Okay, this is a fairly large core. I'm saying it's about probably 50 centimeters or something. And uh, this core weighs about, when it's solid, it's about 80 kilos. Okay, if you print this uh, hollow, and this is a, approximately a 60 millimeter shell, and you remove this sand here, you can put a hole in the top and you can pour the sand out. We just split it open to let people see inside. But you can remove the sand, you reduce the weight by around about 45%. Okay, so it weighs about 42, 43 kilos. So it's easier to handle the core. Okay, uh, and as I said, this is a core within a core. So it's extremely difficult to get the sand out of this because that's, that's what it looks like. It's extremely difficult. But you, with using a Ferran binder system, uh, the sand just gets blown out using a light compressed air. Okay, so it's got considerable advantages uh, for uh, customers with complex cores and cores. And I'll give you another example. Oops. So this was this is a small impeller core. It's about 12, 14 centimeters in diameter. It was conventionally made up of five sections. Well, we can print this as one part, okay? So if you print it as one part, there's no flash lines, there's no tolerance issue, and you get consistent parts continually. And with this particular part, I think we can get nine, 980 parts in one bill box, okay? Uh, and this is the same impeller core as you saw previously. This is the original design because it's made up in segments. The original design, the blade tips are square here and they have to be uh, hand grind. Uh, with 3D printing, you can uh, optimize the blade tip so that it's a finished blade tip. There's no uh, grinding of the blade tips afterwards. It's a finished product. So you can reduce your post-processing steps of this hand grinding that they were doing. You can also just shoot a fettling. There's no parting lines. So you get an optimal core. And as I said, also your balancing because you, you, you get a, a very homogeneous uh, uh, part. The balancing is a lot quicker and easier to perform. Whoops. And uh, the additional, I mean, this has been said throughout uh, various presentations with uh, a 3D printing. I mean, it's extremely uh, fast process for customer orders because there's no tooling, you just print from the CAD file, so there's no time wasting. Uh, um, there's no hard tooling required, you have no uh, uh, insurance or warehouse costs or manpower costs for st storing any tooling. Uh, your complex cores can be designed to be uh, efficient, uh, and there's no design limitations. So obviously, you can't print uh, let's say extremely small holes, say less than four, four millimeters or something, because it's difficult to get the sand out, but there's no real design limitations. So you can optimize your product to improve your performance, better heat exchange, etc. Okay? And as I said, if you're using this in a production process, you can modify the design at any time because all you're doing is altering the CAD file. You're not having to change any tooling, so you can improve your product uh, through the life cycle of the product very simply, okay? Because there's no tooling costs. And that is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, David. I think that was a very interesting take on really the benefits to the end user of what you can do with design and. To, particularly to see the benefits for impellers, which have always been, from a foundry point of view, an absolute beast to mount manufacture in reality, and the fact that you can get the fine edge on the blades that you really can't do without this technology. And I think it's interesting to see 
um, the benefit to the market. I would like to ask if anybody has got any questions for David. Um, I'm sorry I missed the first few slides, the session next door was running late. Um, but do you, I missed what material those in colours were. Uh, it's a stainless steel stainless material. Yeah. Have you seen any issues with carbon pickup at all from either the Curanic or the Phenol? Because, as you know, we have proud owners of some of your machines. Um, and we have seen some evidence of it. Yeah, we haven't done any type of analysis yeah, on carbon pickup. No. We don't, I mean, we don't do the casting, no. so uh, we don't we, investigate we, that. We see it in house on. I'm not talking about like, very high levels, but particularly on things like super duplex with an O3 um, o carbon content, you've seen noticeable pickup. Uh, well, as I said, I said we don't do the yeah. casting, so uh, I'm afraid we don't do that analysis, uh, Jeff. Yes? Well, we've heard a lot about these, these kinds of machines over the last couple of days. What I'm curious about is what the maintenance regimes are like on them and what the lifespan of these machines are and what the limitations are given the, the, the you know, working in a, a foundry environment, let's say, and how, um, how, what is the maintenance regime consist of? I mean, are, are you having to maintain them every day? Or are there regular things that go wrong with them? Or? Uh, the maintenance is you do have to uh, keep the machine clean. I mean, there is a, a daily a cleaning routine uh, uh, after you've printed a bill box. It takes about an hour and a half to clean the machine, so you just remove the loose sand uh, uh, from the machine. Uh, once a week, we recommend you go inside the machine, so where the bill box moves in, and you do, it's a three or four hour cleaning again to remove all of the sand because obviously the sand being very abrasive and the cleaner you keep the machine the more reliable it is okay and then uh, we have an annual maintenance uh, where we change out say major components it could be print head it could be the recoater uh, and you pay an annual fee for that uh, maintenance okay and uh, so as i said the cleaner you keep keep your machine the better and also uh, the more you use the machine, it is better. If you leave the machine sitting still, it's not so optimal for the machine. You can, the print head is parked on a capping station. I mean, it can sit there for over a week, but uh, the more you print, the better it is for the machine. Okay, and I would say the life of a machine uh, can be, if it's well maintained, uh, 12, 13 years, okay, if it's well maintained. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Please accept this as a small token of our appreciation for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.